Big Jason, and today I'm interviewing David Garfinkel, Master Copywriting Coach, about Scott Haynes, my best friend who tragically passed away recently this past Christmas, and his family's asked me to continue his legacy and continue spreading the word of how amazing Scott was as a copywriter and as a person. As you may or may not know, Gary Halbert called Scott his best student. When people asked him about copywriting, he said, study Scott's course, Shortcut Copywriting Secrets, before you study anything that I've written, David Ogilvy, and many others. So here is my interview with David Garfinkel about Scott Mongo Haynes. All right, David. So here is a promotion that Scott did um, for a generator, solar generator, that, uh, is, from what I recall, I found in his notes, um, sold millions yeah well that doesn't surprise me at all big jason because um well let, let me let me step back and then i want to address why it sold millions um and i'm sure it did i'm absolutely sure it did usually you know i critique about eight or ten letters a week i do critiques for copywriters individual copywriters i, I do them for companies i i do a group critique with agora financial i do a uh, one-on-one -on -one written critiques for GKIC, and uh, usually, uh, except with Agora, when we're looking at proven winners, usually when I do a critique, I can find a few things I could suggest to improve, make it stronger. Sometimes I suggest a lot. Sometimes I say, whoa, throw this up <laughs> in the air and get your shotgun out and see if you can make it some skeet. Let's start over. Um, I couldn't find one thing wrong with this, okay? And wow. yeah, everyone thinks I'm a nice guy. I'm I have a pretty sharp, uh, uh, critical mind when I'm looking at stuff because that's how you make more money. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that this thing made millions, and I'll, I'll get into why. The main thing I want to say at the top, and and we'll get into the weeds because I'm going to get really detailed about some of this stuff. But the main thing to look for in this letter is, number one, the power of research. But number two, he presented the research in a really interesting way, in, in an unconventional way. He presented the research the way you would make an action-adventure movie or a thriller movie. And I'm not kidding. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, the other thing I want to say is I don't know if this is Scott's best letter, because I haven't read all of them. But I would say this is one of the best sales letters I've ever seen, period. Wow. Any, anyway, yeah, I mean, it, it, he, he just, it, and when I, I, I said before when we were talking, I said, you know, craftsmanship, that he's a craftsman. There's so much craftsmanship, like a master carpenter, or like a sculptor, or like an architect like an artist, you know, um, but it's not artsy fartsy. I mean, this is, this right. is the real deal. This is the real deal, uh, in terms of great craftsmanship and something that is, it's not like an academic example you'd show in a class. Although I think it's great that you're taking real stuff and, and teaching people with it, Jay. But I'm, I'm just saying this is, this is the real deal. This is something that really worked in the real marketplace. So, um, awesome. David, so how did you come to know Scott and his course? Yeah, um, so I I met Scott through a, a secret, private, closed group of copywriters others have probably talked about called The Gonk. And um, he was one of the people there. And, uh, you know, in, in the group, he, he wouldn't say very much. And when we would get all heavy and philosophical, uh, he would put in a link to a Simpsons cartoon or something. I mean, <laughs> it, it was just real, real lighthearted. So uh, then I, I can't remember how long ago, maybe four years ago. Uh, I don't remember exactly when I met him. I think it was four or five years ago. This this group I, I'm in, we were all planning to get together in San Francisco for no particular uh, business or, or results-oriented reason. It was basically... Just, just to get together and hang out. And I'd actually prepaid reservations at the hotel where we were going. And one by one, every single other person peeled off, had some excuse that they couldn't make it. 
except Scott. Mongo um, did come. He he didn't stay at that hotel. He he stayed at another one um, on Van Ness Avenue near the bay, and uh, so we had that meeting minus twelve other people. Okay, and that wow. was the first time I met him. And he's you know he's a he's a wild man. I mean he's sort of mild mannered, but. He'd been driving down from Oregon that day on Highway 1 with his girlfriend in this, I guess, this rental car on on this very, um, you know, this, this road with a huge cliff off to the right-hand side and no guardrail. I mean, just daredevil kind <laughs> of stuff, you know? Right. And, and so we met at his hotel, and he said, well, where's the closest bar? And I said, I don't know. And we walked up the street, and... You're not going to believe this, but there's this place called Ho's, <laughs> and it was a Chinese restaurant and bar. It's since been uh, reinvented as a yuppie kind of uh, fern bar, also called Ho's, but the drinks, the price of the drinks has gone up by like 300 percent. But anyway, we we went there. We were hanging out, and um, I think that was the first time I met him. And so I came around dinner time, and we must have sat and talked and drank for for six hours. And it, it it was it was one of those lifetime conversations. And honestly, I don't remember much of what we talked about, but it, it was it was it was wonderful. It was it was deep. I, I remember at one point in the conversation, I I was looking at his face, and I was re- reminded of of Orson Welles. Um, I think it's Orson Welles. Who's the guy who did the Palmasan? commercials we will serve no wine before it's time i believe that's orson wells i'm sure anyway uh i I could just see this deep well of emotion underneath the surface that he he almost never revealed in speaking but it it was it was in all over his face and we really connected we we had a great time um his girlfriend didn't say much she was just sort of fascinated by this bizarre conversation these two (laughs) copywriters were having Right. And um, from there, we became much better friends. So, you know, I mean, it's it's just the way it works. You have a face to face meeting, someone and you click, and and you become a better friend after that. Um, and one thing I noticed about him, uh, I, I I do re- so his course. You know, in in this um, secret society of Gonk, there are three people who have courses: me, Carlton, and Scott. And those were the only three at the time that that Bond and Kevin gave the Halbert seal of approval to and recommended and sold. Right. I also I also promoted the course um, to my list at one point, and uh, I, I I don't I, actually I think we made a lot of money. We might have I think we might have made something like eleven thousand dollars, and you know uh, split split up per the affiliate agreement, and. Um, yeah, I think it's a really great course. One thing I'd like to say about Scott is, well, most great copywriters are unique in some way. He was unique in the way that he didn't care much for facts or for opinions. I'm not sure he had a lot of opinions. He may have. He didn't really share them with me. Um, a, a lot of copywriters I know really just love to spout off about this politically or this socially or yep. this globally or or this um, you know particular event I never heard Scott talk that way at all uh, what I did hear and I, I realized this you know before he left us I realized this about him is you start talking to Scott and it's stories it's one story after another true stories I mean factual stories Right. Um, again, there, there weren't a lot of opinions. There wasn't a lot of manufactured drama. A lot of these stories were very dramatic because he led a very dramatic life. I remember one time, you know, Scott was quite an athlete and quite a uh, martial artist. And he told me about this time he was in a bar. And for some reason, unknown to him, he was minding his own business. Some guy comes up and he hits him from behind. And Scott talked about how he took the guy, threw him against the wall, and hit him, and how he pulled back the last second with the punch because he didn't want to crush the guy's skull. Right. I believe that he wasn't exaggerating, that he just had that level of, we would call it sensory acuity, right? Awareness, Mm micro-awareness in the moment. Um, 
he, so he was very observant. And believe me, most of the stories he and I had were not about fighting. Right. <laughs> they, they were just about everything going on in life. Oh, and by the way, and, his all his hometown buddies confirm all those stories about bars and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure there were more. <laughs> I'm sure there were more. But he's not the kind of guy who would go looking for a fight. No. But he was a street fighter. And my definition of a street fighter is a guy who doesn't start fights, but the guy who finishes, finishes them. Yep. Yeah. But uh, so one thing, I was thinking about him as a writer, you know, and he was a great copywriter. No doubt about that. I think he would have also have been a great novelist because he was a craftsman. He was a superb craftsman. I mean, when we talk about the letter we're going to talk about later, I'm going to point out how I see that and why. Um, he would have been not not a writer like a, uh, oh, you know, like who's the guy? Um, I forget his name. The, who, who, the real, real flashy guy, uh, Elmore Leonard or, um, you know, he, he, he wasn't, he wasn't that kind of writer. Uh, he, he was more like a Truman Capote or a, a Lawrence Block. I mean, he, mm-hmm. it, it's not like he wasn't factual. It's like he, he, he dug out a lot of facts. He, he perceived the world in a, in a very straightforward way that, that quote-unquote normal people could relate to. Um, he, I, don't, I, I think he knew he was good, but I don't think he ever thought... I think he was a humble man. I don't think he ever thought he was, you know, a god walking on this earth or anything. Right. And he he looked at the world that way. I think that's why his copy worked so well because he didn't have to manufacture a personality to become an ordinary guy. Yeah. He was an ordinary guy with extraordinary craft, extraordinary skills. Um, and and his course was like that too. Of course, it, it you know that's why Gary made everyone. I'm guessing I never talked to Gary about this, but I'm. But, you know, he, he, he left no stone unturned. Uh, as it did in his copy, he also did that in his course. He, he was just very thorough and patient and would explain things in simple, straightforward ways that any person who was willing to give it the attention it needed could understand. Yep. And what, uh, would, what would you say to someone that has never experienced his uh, course and uh, as just finding out that it, it's going to be available soon. Uh, I would say, you know, if you're tired of the flash and the dash and, um, you know, uh, all of the complicated formulas and the um, difficult concepts and you just like to have some, you know, very accomplished, uh, reasonable guy sitting across the table from you at a diner or at a Starbucks and you, you want to know how to do every piece of copywriting and how to string it all together to make a winning sales letter, this is the course. Hey, this is Big Jason. So what's included with Shortcut Copywriting Secrets version two and how do you get it? All right, so number one, you're gonna get Scott's original Shortcut Copywriting Secrets course. You're gonna get his original Hottest Sales Letters, volume one. Plus, you're also gonna get his missing magic order form. In volume one of his hottest sales letters, he mentioned an order form that he lost that worked like magic for a promotion he did for Gary Halbert. Well, I found it and you're gonna get it. Plus, you're gonna get the all new hottest sales letters of volume two. This is over 200 pages of home runs, including four controls. Three of the controls are still running today because his longest running client can't find anyone who can beat Scott still today. All right. So who's going to be breaking these ads down with me? Clay Makepeace, John Carlton, David Deutsch, Adam Carroll, Colin Chung, David Garfinkel, Brian Kurtz, Million Dollar Mike Morgan, Harlan Kilstein, Kevin Rogers, Sammy Markowitz, Caleb O'Dowd, Bon Halbert, and many more. All right. So how do you get your hands on Shortcut Copywriting Secrets version two? Well, you go to shortcutcopywritingsecrets.com and get on the wait list because I'm going to be releasing this very soon. All right. And once you opt in, you're going to get a very special recording from a expensive Gary Halbert seminar. I found this in a promotion that Scott wrote for Gary. I was cleaning out his apartment here in Austin for his family and it's a killer message from No Sex Gary, a real honest to God way to get rich with direct marketing. Okay? So you're gonna get that just for opting into the wait list. 
All right. And then on the thank you page in the welcome email, there's going to be a link for my private Facebook group for Shortcut Copywriting Secrets version two. Join that because I'm going to be releasing some rare audios and interviews and some information that I found in Scott's stuff that's really cool that I'm not going to release anywhere else. So once again, this is Big Jason. Thank you so much for helping me continue Scott's legacy. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Uh, Scott was my best friend. So go to shortcutcopywritingsecrets.com and I'll see you there. Gary Halbert, the Gary Halbert letter actually holds cassettes that I still Yeah, sure, absolutely. So that's the uh, that's the uh, copy right here. Um Gary so Gary Halbert asked me question is, is next to it. Uh, kick ass uh, copywriting secrets is next to it. Um,